This is A View from the Bunker. Now, here's Derek Gilbert. How does one go from being an expert in dog training to CEO of a Christian media ministry? Welcome to A View from the Bunker. I'm Derek Gilbert. That is the subject of conversation here with our guest. Actually, the first guest we've had in the barn since we have uh, opened here, and we wanted to make sure that Joe was our first guest. He has uh, taken over as the CEO of uh, Skywatch TV. He is the host of the program, an author, and also a, uh, an expert in natural, uh, holistic health, natural health. Uh, we'll talk about that as well, uh, Joe Artis Horn. Joe, thanks for coming Derek. out and joining us. I'm so glad to be here, brother. This is, um, it's been an interesting journey these last 10 years. Um, it was fall of 2014, so we're, it'll be fall of 2014 since we came out here to uh, talk with uh, you, your dad, your family about yeah. uh, partnering in Skywatch TV. And in fact, yep. you're the one who kind of spilled the beans. Your dad didn't even uh, tell us what the mission of, the, uh, of Whispering Ponies Ranch was going to be. If it had happened even probably two years later, he probably would have. But back then it was still, you remember this, because you and Sharon and I went on a tour. Right. We took an ATV out into the woods. I was just playing the role of host. Yeah, yeah. The Gilberts are here. My dad's doing something with them. He's building something. And he, he and uh, <clears throat> your mom had to go to the uh, Strategic Perspectives Conference, Chuck yeah. Missler's conference up in yeah. Coeur d'Alene. Yeah. And so he left you as uh, you know, our chaperone. Yeah, and I, it was great I remember fun. very clearly because we're driving in the ATV and you said, over, over there's where the zip line's going to be. And right. we're going to, like, zip lines? What? Yeah, so the Gilberts had no idea about this place called Whispering Ponies Ranch. Yeah. I'd never heard of it. It wasn't a part of my dad's uh, talking points. It was all about the potential of getting you here to help him with Skywatch TV. Yeah. Which, man, in 2013, 14, it was still like an embryo. It was mostly just an idea and a hope and a and a roll of the dice, will people receive this? And kind of a response to his inability to get books that he was publishing at Defender on other people's programs. That, that actually, for your viewers that don't know why Skywatch actually started, it was originally a, a reaction to my dad saying, you know, I gotta build a TV show too, I guess, because he would submit these books to other outlets, to big programs, televised programs. Right, right, right. Eh, you're talking about politics and you know things that are outside of the echo chain this is not like uh, inspirational 10 steps of faith eh, probably too hot for tv yeah yeah we got to do it ourselves giants <clears throat> yeah giants? giants and the nephilim and yeah, UFOs what the, yeah, and yeah yeah ezekiel's wheel and genesis and you know the, the book of revelations dissected it did not fit the um the inspirational hour with brother so-and-so he's like we're gonna have to start a tv show yeah and, um, and, you know, while this was going on, uh, Sharon and I had, uh, we, we first met you back in 2011 at the uh, Supernatural Science and Prophecy Conference. I remember that night, yeah. Tom Dunn and the late Russ Dizdar had put that together back in, uh, it was Akron, Ohio. Mm-hmm. Canton, Ohio. Canton, Ohio. Yeah, that brings and, a bell. And um, we had uh, been podcasting for, well, about five years at that point through PID, that P- yeah, PID, PID radio, radio, Appearing into Darkness. Uh, which uh, we are we are still doing. We are like <laughs> a fellow interviewed me on his podcast the other day. It's the Godfather of Christian podcasting. Like, really? I, I want to jump. So in, I'm though. like the OG, I guess. No, yeah. I want to jump in on this. So, as as God is my witness, the first time I heard the word podcast was my dad referencing this couple that he had met called the Gilberts. <laughs> to me, at that point, you guys were just a name. It was the Gilberts and something having to do with a podcast. And I remember asking him a what cast? Yeah. And I'm it's radio, right? Because I'm thinking Art Bell, Rush Limbaugh, AM radio. What do you mean a pod? What is this? Um, you know, my my first impression of the internet was like 1996. It was only a few years after that that people started sorting out podcasts. Yeah, so was, I don't know how late, early it was. Late, it was late 2004 <clears throat> when the code was developed. Uh, Adam Curry, former <clears throat> MTV VJ and a fellow named Dave Weiner, developed the code. In, and I remember this distinctly. In October of 2004, they developed the code. And we started podcasting March 6th of 2005 was our first episode. And it was to wow. tell people why they should buy our novels. <laughs> and then it's like, okay, well, that's one episode. What do we do next? Now week? what, right? Yeah. So that's when we started, you know, okay, well, let's explain yeah. the reasons we write. Um, but yeah, I mean, younger viewers, you might not even know there was this thing back in the day called the iPod. You know, that, yeah. that has already yeah. come and gone yeah. and is no longer around. 
but, to but that's, finish, the, that's where the name came from, podcast. To finish my point and to, and to bring to the center of what I was getting at is that you being referred to by this other gentleman as the godfather of <laughs> Christian podcast, that was always how my father felt of you and Sharon both. And mm-hmm. that's why when Sharon's on the Skywatch television program, I always, I always make sure I, I inform our audience that she's a legend and pioneer in Christian radio. Both of you guys, well, really, she, really. You know, she actually saw... The, the, the value in, in podcasting and, and using the internet to get the message out before I did. Because I'm an old radio guy. I got into radio back in 1980. Right. Uh, you know, we've had friends who like to tell people, yeah, Derek's radio career began the year I was born. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and yeah, your introduction, your career spans 40 years, which is, a, you know, how do you say he's old without saying that he's old? Um, but, but that was, uh, uh, well, it's, it's true. Uh, and I, I just had this idea that we had to be on a terrestrial radio station to be actually doing something. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so we experimented for a bit on one of the uh, Patriot radio networks out there, you know, the ones that are, well, uh, and they, they wanted us to pay to be on the program. Sure. It was like, no, we'll, we'll just continue doing it. But she was like, <clears throat> why do you need, when you're on the internet, you're already syndicated around the world. Right. And it took a while for that to sink into my, you know, thick uh, head, but uh, she's right. And uh, here we are. And it's what we're doing with, with this program. I mean, if you're watching this or listening to this, it's because of the internet. We're not putting it out over a transmitter and beaming it out over the airwaves. Right. And there is a revolution that is now caught up to Christian broadcasting in general. And I know that, uh, uh, well, we'll talk about this here in just a little bit, but uh, it's, it's affecting everything. Uh, you know, Skywatch TV is being affected by it. Yeah. But um, anyway, that, that whole thing uh, of, of feeling like I needed to make a change because while we had started down this path of podcasting and been invited to a couple of conferences, including your dad inviting us to the first Branson Future Congress to interview people uh, for our podcast, um, and then you know, Gary Stearman and, and Bob Ulrich now at Prophecy Watchers invited us to their conference to do the same thing, and they got the bright idea to put a camera in the room, which then allowed them to create DVD extras, you know, interviews outside of the presentations. Uh, that led to us being invited to speak at conferences. And meanwhile, I'm selling steel Monday through Friday and thinking there's got to be something else to do. And I was getting increasingly frustrated, even though we were paid well and treated well. Uh, Sharon said, speak to some wise brothers in the Lord who can give you some guidance and counsel. And your dad was one of the folks I talked to. He's like, well, might be something in the works. Just how, And then Come that October of 2014, he invited us out and asked Sharon to be a uh, guest on one of the pilot episodes of what became Skywatch TV. So, I have a memory, and I'll share it, because it's, it's, um, it's one that stands out to me as the de facto first time my father watched you host Skywatch TV. So I'll refresh your memory and inform your audience, because I know they don't know, and you might not remember. But you had come down, and you were going to watch... <clears throat> you had decided that, that you were going to accept this partnership with my father and come to work for Skywatch TV. And I don't remember the details about when you were going to start hosting. At the time, Gary Stearman was kind of realizing that, that to do that and Prophecy Watchers and to go back and forth from Oklahoma back and forth, the idea that Gary Stearman, who was the original host of Skywatch, the TV program, we needed to do something to, to, to help Gary focus more on Prophecy Watchers. Remember that whole thing where right, right. we were going to have two studios in this, and we're going to turn the cameras around. One of them looks different. Do you, do you remember any of that? Uh, vaguely, <clears throat> vaguely, yeah. This is, this is like 2012 we're having these talks, and they're, mm-hmm. they're driving down, and we're looking at studios. And stuff. Anyway, so I'm just history lesson. So Gary Stearman was the original host of Skywatch TV. He made it about six or seven episodes, and it was really obvious that, that it was too much for him to and try And he was to... still pastoring a church in <clears throat> Oklahoma City yeah. at the time. Yeah, and that was right at the time, too, where he had started some health challenge. It was just too much. So the first person on the planet that my dad thought, I, the only other guy I know that could do this job would be Derek Gilbert. Hmm. And that was when he reached out to you, and you guys talked, and... I'm, like you said, I'm off trying to train dogs, and I've got this whole other world happening. So a lot of this at the time is just my father talking to the couple called the Gilberts, and I had met you once. And, and um, I don't want to get into the weeds on this, but I had also even 
rec recommended to my father that he not do this Skywatch television thing, <laughs> which is another thing that your viewers probably don't have a clue about. But if you understand context, it wasn't because I didn't believe in the ministry angle of it. I, I thought, basically, in a nutshell, Dad, you've talked for a decade about making sure mom's okay if something happens to you. And now you want to invest this giant nest egg into a total experiment called network TV. We don't have a clue what we're doing. You know, what, what if two years later you decide this is too much? You're going to have, and I told him, you're going to have 50 people working for you, ringing your phone off the hook, you're going to end up with a retired Walmart building. Mm -hmm. is this, mm -hmm. this is funny because we ended up, this, this almost became like prophetically so, right? <laughs> I just didn't realize at the time it'd be my phone <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in the long run. But we ended up with a, with a retired grocery store. I mean, almost right, everything right. I said, just tongue in cheek, came, you know, God has a sense of humor. It, it, it worked out. But the first time I saw Derek Gilbert host was actually supposed to be Dead Pets Don't Lie in 2015. Mm. Donna, uh, Donna Howell and I had put out the book Dead Pets Don't Lie, and <clears throat> it was our first interview on the set. We were both nervous, and, and so we thought my dad could kind of softball us the questions, right? We'd never done a show like this before. And my dad, it was the weirdest thing ever to be in the room because, you know, Tom as, a, as a, almost a master orator, mm -hmm. right? He doesn't get tripped up in his words or his thoughts. He does great television. He's a good communicator. Uh, it's one of the reasons his books have been so viral so many times. He gets up, though, and he had never tried to host before. And he learned in about 10 seconds that hosting is a completely different role than being interviewed. Yeah. The psychology, the timing, the cadence, you're waiting for the guest, moments where you think you maybe nudge them to keep in keeping with the time, and here comes the break, and then you've got to make sure you go to the pit. It's, you're, it's not, um, if, if it looks easy, um, it's because you're surrounded by a great team that's helping you. I'll just put it that way. So he got up there, and welcome to Skywatch TV, folks. Today we're going to be talking about, uh, hang on, I didn't like that. Welcome to Skywatch TV, folks. Today... No, I'm not going to do that. He gave like four of these quick little dry runs. Did not like any of it. He stands up from the news desk. You remember this now? <laughs> Are you, is this ringing a bell now? Derek is sitting there watching because he's just being introduced to the studio. This was not supposed to be Derek starts work that day. And my dad goes, no, Derek, how about you do it? And Derek, <laughs> you, you may not remember this, but he had a coat. He'd brought a coat. I think you might have been wearing jeans, but it didn't matter because the camera yeah, started here. What happens below the desk stays, stays below the below desk. Stays below the desk. Yeah, yeah. Derek puts on his father's cufflinks. Do you remember this? I do. This I is do a not. memory yeah. that's lasered in. It was so, it was so many wonderful, beautiful. Mm. I, I didn't mean to get to you with this. I'm just sharing what happened. But he's putting his father's cufflinks on, and you said something about how special they were to you. You walked over and you sat down at the news desk, and with no prep at all. By the way, Derek, this is about pet food, and here's the industry, and, and da, 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 da. here's the questions. Okay, here we go. And he starts out with this introduction. Off the top of his head, go back and find the Dead Pets Don't Lie series. Hmm. None of this was planned this way. And uh, you one-shot the entire four series. You made Donna and I feel like everything we needed to say got up on the scoreboard. You put us at ease with your talent and your skills. And when it was done, my dad said this. He said, that's why I'm not doing TV, because Derek Gilbert does perfect TV. <laughs> I, I'm just sharing this stuff because it, it's, I've never told you that whole story, and I'm taking the occasion to tell well, you and your audience. Hmm. But um, I don't know. If I were listening and loved Derek Gilbert and or Tom Horn, that would be an interesting bit of history. Hmm. Yeah, I... Until you mentioned the, the cufflinks, I had kind of forgotten about that because, you know, it's just like, well, it's what you do. <clears throat> you know, the, the, the Lord, I, I think, created us and, and trained us for what we are, are doing. And uh, you don't really recognize the, the training until it's in the rearview mirror. Mm -hmm. You know, why did I go through the radio career and have such difficulty at these points? You know, mm -hmm. um, it's because that was not the ultimate goal, but the skills developed in the, in the training was, was part of that, um, which, which then leads to, to this question. How is it that you went from um, pursuing 
a career as a dog trainer to the point where you actually put out a DVD on, on a did. dog training yeah. method. Um, you were working with dogs on a regular basis, dogs with problems, with, with uh, behavioral issues and so forth, um, to coming into this, this vision that, that your father had. And, and how, did, how did learning to master dog behavior prepare you for what you're doing now? <laughs> well, for the record, I, I don't say of myself that I ever mastered the dog behavior thing because as soon as you think you've got it all sorted, you'll mm -hmm. meet a new dog that, that, that puzzles you and you're like, well, now this worked 50 times. Why is this, you know, bio-individuality? Yeah. It's the same with health. Yeah. There's not a one-size-fit-all protocol for everyone's health. Some people need to make adjustments. And so that's, so having said that, I was deep into what was a full career doing the dog training thing. And in 2014, um, you know, Skywatch very much was my father's pet project. And I was just trying to help him edit. I kept looking for a replacement. Somebody would come, you remember this. You remember this. Because I would yep, tell yep. Derek, hey, <laughs> things are going to change pretty soon, Derek. I'll be out. And then there's this new editor that's coming. And he's going he's gonna to take over the show. And... We just, we continued to kind of go through editors. My dad, all the while, for the record, never ever making me feel like I couldn't pursue my career or live my dream or, hey, son, I really need you to come look over the family TV program. None of that. He was always just, God's in control. Go live your life. Love you. Proud of you. Like, it was more me just, he was detached from the realities of what it took to, to run the studio end of things. And you were there. Mm -hmm. And you would go through these editors. And I, I just didn't feel like I could fully step away without somebody there absorbing what was gonna be surprising in terms of the gravity <laughs> of all the responsibilities and stuff. And I just, did, I just didn't, I didn't want it to land on you or any of the other folks that were down there trying to help. And um, so I didn't feel a release. It's probably the simplest way of saying I did not feel a release and I wanted a release. God, I'm trusting you in this season. You know where my heart is. You know where my wants are. You know what I've worked so hard to build with this dog training thing. And I was taking, just to give your viewers a snapshot, I was taking on Monday through Friday, usually at least one to five dogs a week in the week nights. Now, sometimes it'd be two dogs in the same household. But that means that, you know, way more than a family goes to church on a Wednesday. Th this was like perpetually draining because I'm working my full-time job for Skywatch and then I'm training dogs in the evenings. That then turned into, well, mm -hmm. I can't fit you in. I have to do Saturday. Just word of mouth. Then my friend who, who was the man in Branson, Darren Papas. He was a mentor to me. He was a hero to me. Still love the guy. But he was fabulous. He was called the Branson Dog Guy. And he had built over a decade this giant client base of dogs. And one day he calls me and says, Joe, my daughter and I, you know, she's living in California. We're, I'm moving. But I tell you what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to hand you my entire Rolodex. And I was like, God, is this you trying to tell me I'm never going to have time for Skywatch ever again to do this thing I've wanted to do for so long? He, dropped, he just dropped it off in my lap. Mm -hmm. You're the guy, he said. You're the only one out here that I feel I can just tell all my clients to go see. And I had done some training with Darren. We'd worked together. And um, long story short, because I don't know how much of this is going to be fascinating to your viewers, but I ended up absolutely killing myself to keep my Skywatch TV job yeah. and also run this full-time crazy, wild, crazy... And, and people should know at the same time that uh, you've also got a wife and four children. Yes. And you're trying to fit them into yeah. the cracks between the yeah. Skywatch TV responsibilities yeah. and your clients. Yeah, well, back then it would have been a wife and two children, but right, yes, right. eventually four. Yeah. And yeah, it's the same principle of me wanting to also be a dad and a, and a, right. and a, a, a husband and do right by God and keep my household in order and all the things. And, uh, long story short, my good friend Debbie Short, who I've talked about many times, and um, Sharon is off camera nodding because she's met Debbie, and Debbie has a gift, and certainly God has used her in our lives to bring perspective numerous times, and, and um, I was talking to her on the phone one day, and I said, Debbie, I don't know what to do. I, I've got this career. I can't tell if God has just dropped it off in my lap here, man. That should be obvious. It's a full time. This is your dream. 
but I did not have a peace. And it was also starting to wear me out for other reasons because I didn't have a release. I just spiritually felt kind of one leg is in one camp, one's in the other, and I was trying to do it all, and I was wore completely out. And um, Debbie said, Joe, I, I, as I hear you talk, I am seeing a marlin. And she goes into this deep sea fishing thing. I'm like, okay. And she says, in fishing, a marlin is one of the most prized catches to the fishermen. Mm -hmm. But they're very rare, they're very difficult, and they put up a long fight. So for those that have them on the wall or whatever as a, as a trophy or a prize, they've really worked for it. And she said, uh, not to get into the ethics of fishing or putting a fish on a wall, but just metaphorically speaking, she said, as you're talking, I see God like warring with you to get you to see what he's asking you to do, to surrender, to give up the things that you want and that you feel are things you've worked so hard for. I feel like you need to take this next level really pound the gates of heaven and ask him for clarity. And as soon as we had that conversation, I started letting my clients know that I was unavailable. And I started trying to responsibly wean them from a dependency from me. I tried to, to turn them over to this other individual who, who was you know, hit and miss. And I ultimately think some of these clients just did not end up with solutions. But mm. I then went in like 2015 hard into Skywatch. I just, Lord, I'm giving you every morsel of who I am. Much of the plan at that time still didn't make any sense to me at all. But spiritually speaking, with my blindfold on, I just, Lord, what would you have me do? The only thing I felt, it didn't have to make sense that I felt he was saying, this is it, was to just go all in on Skywatch. And so, you know, my wife and I, we, we it's a long story, but we, we made every move and counter move we could to be available to all the things Skywatch. And I had no idea at the time, other than to just sense it was very important to make sure I was attached, that we'd be sitting here today post my father and to look at where the ministry might be if we had not been obedient at the time to just go all in. Mm. And that's not to say I have a Messiah complex or that it would implode were I not here um, or anything like that, but just where we're at today, you, you, can't, you can't be where we're at without going back years ago and start building towards this, this moment. Right. So it's, that's the shortest version I can give you. But. Mm. The, uh, the influence of Catherine behind the scenes is, is really something I don't think most viewers appreciate. She has uh, been instrumental in uh, setting up the, uh, the store which provides the funding for not just Skywatch TV, but the reason Skywatch TV exists is to finance yeah. the work at Whispering Ponies Ranch. Mm -hmm. uh, but she has also taken a step out now in uh, hosting a new program that Skywatch TV has featured the last couple of years, mm -hmm. uh, and that is now taking a different direction. This is simply his coffee shop. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, th this is uh, a, a different type of program from what Skywatch TV has become known for. Um, what is Simply His for viewers not familiar with it, and how might that, how does it complement what Skywatch TV puts out? It started off years ago. Um, Allie Anderson, Donna Howell, those are both my siblings. My mother, Nita Horn, mm -hmm. who now is like post founding WPR, Whispering Ponies Ranch, and she's in the season of life a few years ago where she's asking God, now what? What else can we add to the ministry? And one of the things, and my wife was integral to these conversations, well, the four of them started attending women conferences to go next level. Let's, let's go, let's be a part of the atmosphere of worship. Let's really dig deep and ask God what else. They felt like he was getting ready to nudge them to another layer of ministry. And so I'm collapsing this, but following one of, I, I wanna say it was women of, oh, my wife would know, but it, the, the Women of Influence Conference, I think, some, something to that effect was uh, in 2020, and they, they attended this thing, or no, it would have been 2019, I right, think. Right, right, because before the Pre-COVID lockdowns, yeah. yeah. And uh, anyway, they all left feeling, this is a collapsed version, but they all left feeling like God wanted them to resume something they had started over 20 years ago, or, or 20, 2005, so, you know, 17 years ago, 16 years ago at the time. And it was the Women of Raiders. And they had done like two or three podcasts and the ladies right away responsive to it. But 
to make a long story short, the structure of our lives also owning a food catering company at the time, it just no chance. Was this going to survive? No one had the time. It was brutal. We were mm -hmm. working like till 11 o'clock at night trying to do podcast. It was just brutal. So they felt like, you know, spiritually, it, it's a great idea. The timing is off. And the timing would not become on until about four years ago. And they just felt like it was time to really kind of lean into the women. We have a lot of women that watch Skywatch television um, who also appreciate, in addition to Bible prophecy, things that, that, are, that are dealt with that have to do with grandmothering and being moms and dealing with holidays and, and not to frame it at all like it's a superficial program, but the lighter side of just being women and doing life. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Where, where Skywatch, the flagship program, tends to be really heavy a lot. We're dealing with politics, prophecy, the supernatural, what's happening with the Biden administration, what might happen later this year politically, that kind of stuff. Mark of the Beast, digital technology, um, big tech censorship, mar uh, where AI is moving us t towards you know, a, a cataclysmic moment where what we think is going to be uh, beneficial and serve us may end up being unintentionally a, a new form of master-slave relationship where we are now dependent on technology for our own survival. That's the Skywatch flagship show. To kind of step away from some of that and, and, and do a program for women that, that's almost more nourishing to the souls of a woman. To have a cup of coffee and to talk about faith and what happens when trouble comes knocking. And what do you do in these valleys of decision making? And like you said, you know, my wife probably less visible on the flagship show, so people may not know this about her, but she is the salt in the middle of all Skywatch that makes the back end. I, I couldn't do what she's doing. From the bookstore that, that she was uh, absolutely instrumental in building to the continued maintenance of all the technology and whether the shopping cart is batching and whether a person places an order and it gets shipped right away. Like, it's, it's just, I cannot have this be my life, right? This is what she's doing. In addition to producing the Simply His Coffee Shop program, in addition to being a mom and busing mm -hmm. one of our children to dance and volleyball and doing the school thing. And so I've, I've done everything I can to support her, um, give her moments that are just for herself where she can sit there and, and uh, veg out for a minute and recoup. Uh, but I, I don't always feel like she gets those adequate windows. She's a very hardworking person. Yeah, yeah. and I, I will say this, uh, it, it's, it's difficult to consume content while you're producing content, so I, I can't say I've watched many of the episodes, but right. those that I've seen, um, the, uh, the women of Simply His are deep thinkers. So this is not <clears throat> like the view, a Christianized view. Right. This is, this is uh, some really deep thoughts on uh, how to do life as a Christian woman. And uh, I think we, as Christians need to recognize as God created us from the beginning, male and female, we've got different roles to play. Um, the world would tell us that it doesn't really matter. We're interchangeable parts like, you know, potato right. head dolls where mm -hmm. you can just swap not only roles but parts and genders. And that, that is not how we were created or designed. And I think we are happiest when we fit into our roles. And, you know, how we do it is going to differ, as you say, bio... How is it? Bio-individuality. Bio-individuality, <laughs> I like that. Um, because we are all different. I mean, what, what it means for me to be a man is not necessarily the same as what it means uh, for you to be a man. Uh, I don't have as many guns, for example. But uh, that there is still a difference between how we act in, in the, the roles as fathers and husbands, brothers, uh, than uh, a woman would act as a mother, a sister, a wife. And that is as it should be. Not, there is not one that is better than the other. That is just how the design was envisioned and put into place by God. And so it is good that there are, I think, essential. There are programs like Simply His out there to complement. And, and you know, quite frankly, some, something Sharon and I have talked about for many years that would be wonderful if we could ever find the time to do something similar where... You know, me, you, Dakota, John, you know, sit down and do something, right. you know, for, for, for men. Right. Yeah, it doesn't have to involve, you know, cigars and cold drinks, but, you know, uh, th there are pizza ministries. Pizza football, out, pizza, all, all the standard yeah, stigmas that it, get attached to man type, right? Right, right, yeah. The older <laughs> I get, sadly, the less important football oh becomes. Oh, my goodness. Uh, so, um, 
The, the future <clears throat> of Skywatch TV, um, we, we kind of touched on this earlier on, how broadcasting has changed, and I can speak to this with some inside knowledge, <clears throat> having been in professional secular yeah. broadcasting from 1980 through about 92, and then again in 2006 and seven, where I was um, on the radio. Um, I, I don't know how many of our viewers know this, but I was actually offered an opportunity back in 1997. Is that right? No, 87. <laughs> <laughs> um, 1987, when QVC, the shopping network, was being wow. set up in Philadelphia, I was on the air at a top 40 station there, and I was offered an opportunity to become one of their first on-air hosts. And I turned it down because they wouldn't let me keep my radio job. Mm. So anyway, uh, that, that could have been me, you know, pitching the uh, kitchen devices. On, you could have been uh, Casey Kasem, like uh, 2.0. Uh, yeah, well, you know, Casey Kasem <laughs> or David Venable for people who watch QVC, who's just celebrating 30 years with the channel. Oh, my. God bless him. Um, but I, I think it would have been like Pat Sajak after a while who once described hosting the price of, or what is it, Wheel of Fortune as uh, hearing his brain cells flake off and hit the floor. <laughs> um, but... Broadcasting has changed a lot where it used to be you had you know, three networks, ABC, CBS, NBC. You had PBS and uh, you know, a few independent TV stations here and there. Radio uh, was what it was. And, and now the Internet has changed all of that. Yeah. And um, the cost, just the, the physical expense of broadcasting a signal, I mean, the electricity alone for a transmitter, you know, a 50,000 watt or 100,000 watt radio transmitter, television transmitter, the t cost of maintaining a tower. Yeah. I mean, uh, I knew some of the engineers back in the day that had to literally climb the towers right. in the middle of ice to try to de-ice things so the broadcast would continue. Whereas now with the internet, it's if you've got a decent internet connection, which most of us do anymore, even here in rural America, uh, you are syndicated globally. Um, how is this affecting Skywatch TV going forward with the changes that are taking place with Christian broadcasting television? I wish that I could tell you conclusively that we're kind of looking back at this chapter that we're in right now retroactively like in a decade if the Lord tarries and we're still here and tell you exactly how we ended up navigating it so I could steal that information, go back and apply it right now. <laughs> because the truth is we're, we're in this we're in a dichotomy because it's not fully yet that all media is distributed through the internet, through podcasts, through platforms like Roku, YouTube, Rumble, Vimeo, TikTok, you know, Facebook. It's not that all of the information is being distributed that way, but a lot of it is. Mm. And so we're, we're kind of, we're in this dichotomy where were I to pull, for example, with the astronomical cost of network television to be there, that means, you know, the old school people are, are watching us, they're setting their DVR, they're recording the program, maybe they catch us live on cable, whatever. The old way, I say old, like 10 years ago, mm -hmm. way that people watched almost everything. I mean, people were still selling cable with package deals 10 years ago. Right. Those industries have had to either completely reinvent themselves and include some kind of a paid-for, internet-based subscription, or they're gone, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But we're not exactly and completely in a position where were I to pull all of our networks, because I, I, I rationalize this every single day right now, looking at the cost of being present, and I don't want to name networks specifically because some of them are dear friends of ours. We're hoping that they succeed. And their reach is still significant, which, which adds to the dichotomy here. Um, but it is my view that they may be failing mm -hmm. over time. But were I to pull my program, and I could, again, I could rationalize this because we have friends in media right now. They're not on paid for network television. Yeah. They're getting millions and millions of views and plays. Uh, they're making generational wealth that that they have they have almost no overhead they just create content and they have these paywalls set up for 10 bucks a month you can be a part of our platform the the uh the the whatever club and you, you know for three dollars a month um they're they're doing advertisements where they're selling somebody else's product which being a non-for-profit and a christian ministry my hands are tied to a lot of those avenues right so i can't pitch an external product even if i love it like the timeless value of silver and gold. We've foregone a fortune of, of opportunity 
to, to seize that uh, momentum this last year and to get our hands on an opportunity to have appealed to people's need for the timeless value of silver and gold with all this question around digital dollar and the currency maybe eroding and the value of the U.S. dollar. And, and done it to have robustly supported Whispering Ponies Ranch and these other non-for-profit. But because I can't speak to the spiritual values of said company, because this is, a, this is another a, a, a for-profit business that may or may not support religious ideologies that our viewers would then go discover and then be upset about. You, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We as a non-for-profit ministry, I can't sell you action figures or somebody else's movies or... And that's a lot of what you see people online doing. They're making right. just, it's the, the money handover for this is ridiculous. We have stayed in the stream of, Lord, what would you have us do, even if it means it costs us a fortune, so that we don't lose our ability to underwrite what we're doing at Whisper, Whispering Ponies Ranch and Skywatch TV, mm -hmm. and not compromise to some of these money streams, our values, or even to attach ourselves in terms of brand equity to some of these other for-profit opportunities that you see people online endeavoring. And I, I know I'm talking a little bit vague because I don't want to hurt anyone. Right. So you have to follow me on this. We're, we're in this dichotomy where network television costs an astronomical amount of money. And I could rationalize just severing that from Skywatch TV, going straight to all the four, uh, four free platforms, and probably just with the viral ability of what people are already doing and participating, probably underwrite much of what we're doing as a ministry, but here's what would happen. The thousands and thousands of people watching us in homes where they're being cared for that don't have an interest or the finances to support an internet-based uh, subscription. Mm -hmm. So I'm talking about a lot of our senior citizens right, right. That, that love and pray for our ministry that are only able to watch it on their cable, mm -hmm. on local television cable, to, you know, local to them, exclusive to them during the hour that it plays once a week. And every time I, I picture them being unable to get that, that uh, uh, access to Skywatch TV, and we get emails all the time, you know, cable is the only place I can watch you. Yep. It means the world to me. Your ministry is, is, it's meant so much to my sense of encouragement or being able to analyze the times we're living in. In order to, to chop the syndicated networks off, I'd have to, at this juncture, make peace with the fact that a giant swath of our supporters at Whispering Ponies Ranch and viewers and, and out of the country, places where they restrict access to the internet, but go figure, have access to, to cable channels that are replaying the program, I'd have to just guillotine them from the equation. So it's, I don't know if that was way too much information or if it was the answer to the question it's, you were asking. No, it sounds like we're, we're in the It's convoluted it, and there's a ton of overlap yeah. But we're still in the middle of that transition right. where until I can point to something that says, okay, we no longer have to pay for network TV, but I also don't have to ostracize or lose these people that love the show. So it's, it's impossible at this point. We're just doing the absolute best we can yeah. to kind of pacify all the needs. But there's a I, lot of restrictions. I, I, I will say this, and I, I know this uh, because I had to set it up for Skywatch TV, and, and Sharon and I use it for what you're watching <clears throat> right now, whether you're watching this on our app, which we encourage you to get, uh, or Roku or Apple TV. Soon, by the way, we can announce that it will be available on Fire TV and Google TV as well as the developer at Subsplash are working on getting those apps out within the next few weeks. Skywatch TV, likewise, <clears throat> will be available on Amazon Fire TV, finally. Uh, we've got Fire <clears throat> Sticks, love Amazon Fire TV, love Roku, uh, Apple TV, little expensive yet, but if you've got one, we're there, uh, as is Skywatch TV. But I will tell you that the cost through the developer that has developed the app for Skywatch TV and for Gilbert House Ministries, as well as a number of our friends, Prophecy Watchers, the PTL Network, and so on, Subsplash, used by many, many Christian media ministries. The monthly expense to be syndicated through Roku, Apple TV, Google TV, Fire TV soon, and of course the uh, through the app itself, is less than it would cost for one one 30-minute segment on a local television station. Forget about one of the big networks oh, like oh, yeah. Forget uh, it. TBN or Daystar or anything like that. Uh, one, and that's the monthly expense to go worldwide. And this is what Joe is talking about when you're talking about the expense and the difference between paying to be on a network that is carried on DISH or DirecTV right. or a local cable system 
Um, I just had a, a, an exchange via email with, with a senior whose uh, local cable system just dropped the network that was carrying uh, the Jim Baker show. And she knew that we are you know, friends with the Baker family and wanted to know what was going on with that. And I said, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, I know that for them, for many of the other uh, Christian media ministries out there, of which Skywatch TV is not even one of the biggest, uh, this is really a time of transition, as you say, where um, syndicating through tools like Roku, Apple TV, Fire TV is much more cost effective. But there is, as you say, a large segment of the audience that is not was not raised with internet, was not raised with this technology, and is still looking for the program on cable, right. and will DVR it, you know, a, 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 and, and record those programs for later viewing if they're not available, but uh, that, that is still how they're consuming it. So we're, yes, we are in a time of transition, and uh, it will be interesting to see how things develop and shake out, because some of the free tools, as you mentioned, like the uh, streaming video websites, YouTube, Vimeo, Rumble. Mm -hmm. uh, Rumble seems to be the least inclined to censor or cancel, but you know, you're not paying to be on that platform, so you never know when that day might come. Certainly, we've had our experiences with YouTube, uh, Skywatch right. TV in particular, but uh, we also have uh, had individual programs spiked for saying things that we didn't even say. So, anyway. Um, well, we, we're certainly entering a consequential period of time, and we look forward to seeing what the Lord brings, and uh, happy to partner and fly alongside Skywatch TV. Joe, we appreciate you, your family. Um, you literally changed the course of our lives. And uh, we are doing what God designed us to do. And it was because Tom Horn said, yes. And so we are blessed to call you our friend, brother. Well, and likewise, I, I, I want to continue to partner together because I think we're stronger when we band together than we are to be jealous over viewerships or who, who got some part of a, an audience that might have split off to see something the Gilberts were doing something. So people need to know that the Horns adore the Gilberts and in every way we can, if there's ways that we can partner together to continue this symbiotic relationship, we love you guys. and. You say, I've altered the course of your life. I'm humbled by that comment. Obviously, God was the one that, that intercepted all of our directions. And yeah. now we might be looking at just a little snapshot of why. Yeah. If it were not for the Gilberts being obedient, coming to Skywatch when you did, and to host so wonderfully, the way that, the way that you handled yourself on screen for those many, many years while I was out training dogs and <laughs> telling my dad not to build any of this. <laughs> we would not be sitting here today. So no, you and Sharon absolutely, absolutely get to own a giant swath of where we were and where we came from. Well, likewise, the uh, Gilberts will always be fans and supporters uh, of the Horns and especially the mission at Whispering Ponies Ranch. And uh, we highly encourage you to take a look at uh, anything connected to Whispering Ponies Ranch, whisperingponiesranch.com, Skywatch TV there is, ex exists to support the work there in changing the lives of children who desperately, desperately need the love of Christ, who need to know that there are adults who will cherish and protect them, not try to use them. So uh, we are honored to be a part of this. This is what that's all about. Coming up, I'm going to tell you where we're going to be for the rest of 2024, at least as far as we know it now. And of course, uh, yes, another example of how being liberal means never having to deal with cognitive dissonance. Bless their pointy little heads. That and more as a view from the bunker continues. It's a new month and we have a new special at the Gilbert House online store. We have a crazy, crazy deal on all of our DVDs. They are, regardless of the retail price, they are 75% off. We keep hearing from the kids these days that everything is going to streaming video, that DVDs are old school. Oh, not for us. No, we are old school. And besides, we don't trust the internet will always be there. So take advantage of this special offer. Everything from our travel documentaries. Basically, follow us as we go through the Holy Land and show you the important sites at Ground Zero on this supernatural war, plus video teachings, oh, yeah. presentations, and much, much more. You know, with 75% off savings on all the DVDs, as many as you want to get, 
you've got the money that you save to go out and buy a DVD player. <laughs> That's it. Take advantage of it now online only at the Gilbert House store, gilberthouse.org slash store. And thank you for your prayers and support. Talking the walk every Sunday night from the beautiful Missouri Ozarks. This is a view from the bunker online at vftb.net. Our web hub is gilberthouse.org. You'll find my personal website, Derek P. Gilbert. Dot com. You'll also find us at uh, a number of places on social media. Social media at X, formerly Twitter, at View From Bunker or at Derek Gilbert. And that's uh, D E R E K, by the way. Um, threads at Derek Gilbert. Eh. But the new social media sites, Truth Social, Gab Me We Get Her, uh, Derek P. Gilbert. Um, and again, if you are watching on uh, YouTube, please take a moment, subscribe, click the bell for notifications. And then if you would, just take an extra moment to guarantee we never get canceled, which is always a risk. We are finally, I think, outside of the window for a strike that was issued against us for something that was said on the program a couple of years ago. Uh, and then we just had another program that was just spiked altogether because of uh, it, it was uh, promoting harmful conspiracy theories. Uh, this goes back to 2019, an interview I did with Dr. Gregory Reed, who we will be seeing shortly, and I'll tell you about that also. Uh, uh, but the the bottom line is this. If you download our mobile app, which is available not just for um, iOS, Android, and Amazon Kindle Fire phones and tablets, it's available for Roku and Apple TV, and soon, soon, coming to Amazon Fire TV and Google TV as well. So those uh, apps are in the works, but uh, all of the others available at uh, gilberthouse.org slash app. Right now, you'll also find a link at vftb.net. Another exciting announcement as we are finally, finally rolling out Gilbert House Coffee. Tell you about that in just a couple of minutes. Uh, and also where you can see us and our good friend, Dr. Gregory Reed, the guy who got us canceled almost uh, in uh, just a couple of minutes as we lay out the schedule of conferences for the rest of this year. But first, uh, this uh, this item, uh, you know, Billy Graham once said that if the Lord doesn't judge the United States, he owes Sodom and Gomorrah an, an apology. And I think we've got more truth, more evidence that that is absolutely true as um, yesterday U.S. Capitol Police, as I'm recording this on Friday evening, Friday, February 2nd, Groundhog Day. So Thursday, February 1st, U.S. Capitol Police announced there would be no criminal charges for the men involved in the filming of an explicit porn video inside the Hart office, the Hart Senate office building, room 216 to be precise. A former aide to Maryland Senator Democrat uh, Ben Cardin was... Um, called out on this a couple of months ago. They caught the porn scene filming himself, recording himself having sex with his male partner. I mean, And again, the, the genders of those involved really doesn't make any difference. I don't care. The fact is this was explicit pornography filmed inside an official Senate office in the Hart Senate office building. They identified the men... The men they identified the room. Uh, one of the, the uh, guys involved, again, former aide to Maryland Senator Ben Cardin, uh, has since relieved of his duties. But uh, And he tried to play the victim card. You know, hey, I'm the victim in all this. They're persecuting me because of my, because of who I love. No, we're persecuting you because you're you on company time, presumably. Inside an office reserved for the workings of the government of the United States of America, filming explicit sex scenes, presumably to share through some online site. Um, according to uh, the uh, column by law professor and scholar Jonathan Turley, it doesn't appear that the, the video site where the scene was shared is a moneymaker doesn't really have any relevance as far as I'm concerned, but according to the U.S. Capitol Police, uh, while it is appears to be in violation of um, congressional rules, they claim that uh, there doesn't appear to be any law against it, so no charges will be filed. 
Now, Turley says uh, that's not entirely true. There are provisions in the U.S. Code that protect property of the United States government from willful depredation or attempted depredation, uh, misuse of public money, property, and records, and so forth. But the Capitol Police have argued that uh, this really doesn't matter. It's just personal purposes, no harm, no foul. So uh, apparently you can film... <laughs> According to U.S. Capitol Police, Congress now has legal sanction to be as obscene as they want to be because no charges will be filed. And yet, those who walked through the Capitol on January 6th respecting the velvet ropes and the Hall of Statues and all that, uh, some of those folks spending as much as 20 years in prison. (sighs) Once again, proof that uh, being... A liberal in these United States means never having to deal with cognitive dissonance. (laughs) Bless their pointy little heads. Well, we uh, have got a a calendar that is filling up for this year and actually want to ask your opinion on something because um, there is an event that uh, might uh, jump to the front of the line just about. Um, And uh, we'll talk about that first before getting into uh, these other things here. And that would be uh, the possibility of Joining Sharon and me on what we're calling, and what Lipkin Tours is calling, a solidarity mission with the state of Israel. Uh, As you know, we've moved our Israel tour from March to November already because of the ongoing conflict between Israel and Hamas and the fact that it looks like um, things may get, uh, may may even, you know, escalate. Uh, As I'm recording this on the afternoon Central Time U.S. in uh, on Friday, February second, news broke this afternoon of um, airstrikes by the United States against militant sites inside Syria and uh, perhaps even elsewhere connected to the Iraqi, or rather to the um, Iran Revolutionary Guard Corps, believed to be responsible for the deadly attack against a U.S. outpost in Jordan called Tower Twenty Two last Sunday morning, in which three U.S. service uh, well, soldiers were killed and more than 40 injured, some with traumatic brain injuries. So uh, this uh, obviously has an impact on the security of our tour. There are places, for example, in the north of Israel that uh, we have been before and would like to go again, uh, Caesarea Philippi in particular, which is part of that zone that's been evacuated, some 80,000 Israelis still away from their their homes in the north because they're just too close to Hezbollah for uh, them to be secure. So uh, but this solidarity mission would probably be in the May time frame. It would be a small group, 20 to 30 people only. It would be a uh, seven-day, six-night uh, accommodations in Jerusalem at a four-star hotel. That is still secure and safe. Um, it would involve visiting some key locations connected to the October 7th attack, like the site of the Nova Music Festival visiting the town of Sterot in the Negev, where the police uh, headquarters was uh, besieged and overrun. Um, one of the kibbutz, or kibbutzim, that was attacked, uh, uh, having a, a barbecue with uh, IDF soldiers just to meet them, talk with them. Uh, we'd also go to Hostage Square in Tel Aviv. Uh, this is really just about bearing witness to what has happened there and then being able to share that with our friends and families when we come back home. Uh, Would you be interested in this? We've not made a firm decision yet as to whether we are going to do this. Uh, Obviously, this uh, escalation this weekend by the U.S. uh, following last weekend's attack on that U.S. outpost in Jordan may have an impact on things. We're just trying to gauge a level of interest. The cost, according to Lipkin Tours, would be about uh, $1,950. That's $1,950 U.S., and that is for the land package only. In other words, the time in Israel, that does not include airfare to and from Tel Aviv. This would also be a blessing to Lipkin Tours and to the economy of Israel, which frankly is really um, struggling right now. Out of 9 million people, about a million have been called up into the reserves, including CEO Aaron Lipkin of Lipkin Tours and at least one of his tour guides that we are aware of, and uh, some family members of his. Um, The archaeologist who spent a day with us at Gilgal Refaim back in March of last year is also now uh, with the reserves. So just trying to get a gauge on this. Is this something you would be interested in? Uh, You can drop me an email, derek at gilberthouse.org, derek 
at gilberthouse.org. Again, this would probably be in May, so it's a fairly quick turnaround. And uh, we understand that that uh, will also have some impact on the uh, level of interest. Uh, Skywatch TV's virtual conference, as uh, we discussed with Joe Horn, that's coming up in just a couple of weeks. Um, February 29th, it will launch 90 days access, 90 days of a period to sign up. But once you sign up, uh, beginning February 29th, you will have 90 days to uh, view the uh, uh, the videos, the presentations. And this includes access to all six feature-length Skywatch Films documentaries. Uh, I think, obviously, the big selling point is that this is Tom Horn's last presentation. He recorded this last fall before he uh, took ill in October and um, was called home by the Lord. But in addition to Tom Horn's final presentation, you've got Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, Pastor Carl Gallops, Dr. Judd Burton, Rabbi Zev Porat, um, Sharon and me, of course, uh, Kenny C., Pastor Casper McLeod, Dr. Mike Spaulding, Dr. Egal German, Vicki Joy Anderson, and more. And uh, you can find that uh, out. Uh, find all of the information and a place to register at DefenderConference.com. And if you register by February 15th, you get a $10 early bird discount. Registration normally $95 for all of this content. Again, two dozen presentations plus six feature-length documentaries and uh, a $10 early bird discount to register by February 15th. The first weekend in April, we will be in uh, Dallas for the um, Prophetic Signs in the Heavenlies Conference. This is here, the Watchmen, Mike Kerr and Jeannie Moore. Uh, it's at a Hit the Hilton DFW Lakes Conference Center in Grapevine, Texas, close to the uh, Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport. <clears throat> uh, price for registration uh, for early bird uh, early birds to sign up was just thirty-five dollars. That will increase, and I've got to double-check the date on that. But uh, you can find all that information at hearthewatchmen.com. Speakers include, uh, well, yours truly, of course, Paul Begley, Colonel David Giamona, Pastor Casper McLeod, David Hebner, Dr. Kerry Mayday. Uh, Dave Hodges, Michael Bodea, Tuv Rose, look forward to meeting him, uh, John Moore, David Paxton, uh, John, Doug Thornton, and, um, and more. And uh, again, find out more information and how long that uh, early $35 registration lasts at hearthewatchmen.com. And of course, if you stay through Monday, April 8th, you can uh, watch the total eclipse of the sun as it crosses the United States. Dallas is right in the path, so perfect place to uh, join us for that. In June, we'll be at His Call Ministries in Sparta, Missouri. That's June 21st through 23rd. Sharon and me just speaking all weekend. The theme of this year, uh, this year's appearance or um, weekend retreat at uh, the Finley River Ranch with His Call Ministries is The Gates of Hell, which is the title of our forthcoming book. That'll be out in the fourth quarter of this year. And uh, so that research is very top of mind, and that will be the theme of the, the weekend, uh, June 21st through 23rd, Friday night, Saturday, and then Sunday morning at uh, His Call Ministries, the Finley River Ranch in Sparta, Missouri. More information at hiscallministries.com. In July, the Go Therefore Conference, Harvest Revival Center, Brookville, uh, which is suburban Dayton, Ohio. Dr. Michael Lake, L.A. Marzulli, Pastor Paul Begley, Dr. Greg Reed. The guy who keeps getting us in trouble here on this uh, channel, Pastor Carl Gallops, Dr. Judd Burton, and more. Uh, and it's a wonderful facility, and the team there at Harvest Revival Center, Center really makes us feel like uh, we are family. So please join us for that one, July 26th and 27th. Information and registration at GoThereforeConference.com. And then the final weekend in October, October 27th and 28th, I think. Or 27, well, anyway, it's the, the final weekend in October. The Nephilim Anthropology Conference in Scotland. Uh, details still forthcoming, but uh, I have agreed to speak there, and we're looking forward to uh, uh, getting back over to Scotland to uh, visit that, uh, that land, the land of Sharon's ancestors, and some of mine as well. Um, I uh, have some Frakes ancestry, which makes me a distant cousin to Jonathan Frakes, you know, number one from Star Trek Next Generation. Kind of an unusual surname, but I, I believe there is a Scottish connection there. So we're looking forward to getting back over there. Now, uh, the other thing I wanted to talk with you about, uh, besides our specials on DVDs for the months of February and March, we're just blowing out every, all of our DVDs 75% off. Um, we are now launching, thanks to a new partnership with Nick Fisher uh, at uh, Kevlar Joe's Coffee a line of Gilbert House Ministries branded and blended 
coffees. And there are three. We just received these in the mail today. We'll be brewing these up this weekend and uh, reporting on them. We've had some other coffee in the past, some of the Camp Herman uh, blend, uh, the the uh, Bigfoot blend, and um, wonderful, wonderful stuff from Kevlar Joe's. We've got three blends that we are offering. This is the amazing Grace blend, so named for Grace the Rescue Dog. And uh, like her with her black and white coat, this is a cookies and cream blend, a medium blend with the uh, taste of cookies and cream. Snarling Dachshund, inspired by uh, Sam T. Dachshund, who uh, sadly, um, oh, yeah, he, he lived a good long, healthy life. He was about 20 years old when he finally passed, but uh, Snarling Dachshund Blend, which is also a medium roast, but this is a Sumatran bean, which is really, really good. If you've had Sumatran coffee, very mellow, full-bodied, but mellow. And uh, so we're looking forward to uh, that. And then one especially for the bunker here, because we run on caffeine here at uh, Gilbert House, and especially here in the bunker, Derek's Bunker Buster. This is a dark roast Colombian. And uh, this is guaranteed to get you up and moving in the morning. And uh, so we are uh, proud to partner with Kevlar Joe's Coffee, American-owned, veteran-owned, and uh, operated. And uh, also from here in our home state of Missouri. So you'll find links to uh, Kevlar Joe's at our store, gilberthouse.org slash store. Or you can go to Kevlar Joe's Coffee as well online and uh, take advantage of these uh, at uh, Smells wonderful. Coffee always does. The proof will be in the cup. And again, we just received these today. We'll be brewing these up uh, and reporting back to you in the days ahead. Well, we appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to watch or listen wherever you are consuming this podcast. If it's, uh, again, video, YouTube, thank you very much. Please download our app. If you're listening online to uh, any of the podcast ca- uh, sites like Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Spreaker, Uh, Pandora, wherever else fine podcasts are sold. Thank you, and we'd appreciate if you take a moment to give us a review or a rating. Um, Our announcer, the inimitable DC Good, and a view from the bunker is a production of Gilbert House Ministries, released under Creative Commons Attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, 4.0 international license. We do this because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Good night, Oliver, wherever you are. I'm Derek Gilbert, and this is a view from the bunker.